be greeted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is Martin the Revelator. I still believe that you are well and you are blessed wherever you are. So um, today we are going to deal with one of the most important topic in the body of Christ, though it has been neglected and many people has never taken this topic into consideration. Um, because uh, many people, they just want to go with the flow or they don't really um, have a passion and a desire to know um, uh, the Bible. They don't really have much time to study the Bible and all this stuff. So today we're going, the topic that we're going to deal with, it's the day which Jesus Christ was crucified. Um, I was actually we're going to talk about the Good Friday, which is considered as the day which Jesus Christ was crucified. Uh, and like some other Christians, I know that like they will say it's not that uh, much important that we can talk about it because whether he was crucified on 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 Thursday, whether he was crucified on on Wednesday or Tuesday or Monday, it doesn't matter. What we know it is that Jesus Christ he died for us. But uh, little did they know that um, many things like uh, that we are doing as Christians, many things that we are practicing as Christians, we have copied these things from the Roman Catholic, and the the, the Romans they call these things from the ancient pagans and the Babylonians, the ancient Egyptians. Uh, the Asian Greeks. So, and then many things are uh, in in the Christian in the Christian world. We have copied some practices from the other religion, or we have, or we have um, uh, copied some other practices from the other people or from the other pagans. So these things they happened long time ago. You get my point. And like when you go through the scriptures, when you read through the scriptures, you'll begin to find out that uh, the day with Jesus Christ, he was crucified. It was not really Friday. Jesus Christ, he was not really crucified on Friday. And this is what I'm going to deal with. And for us to understand that uh, Jesus he was not really crucified on Friday, we need to understand the times of God. We need to understand how God deals with things. The Bible says that your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. So there are ways which are, are God. Uh, there are ways and there are times that God uses. You get my point. Um, so today I'm going to talk about 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 that. The day which Jesus Christ He was crucified. But uh, you know everything that we um, are talking about. Everything that we see, uh, it, 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 it must have a scriptural reference. It has to be backed up with the scriptures. So bear with me today because we're going to go through some scriptures. You get my point? So I'm not talking about something out of nowhere or something that's come up in my mind and stuff like that. I'm talking about something that's in the word of God. So the problem that we are having nowadays is that people, they don't have time to study the Bible. People don't have time to read the Bible. People don't have time to search things in the scriptures. So people go to church to get breakthrough. People go to church for healing. Go to, people go to church to get a girlfriend. People go to church uh, to get a prophecy, to receive a prophecy or to get whatever they want. And most important, and, and most of the things that people are going for in the church are the things that benefit their flesh. Not the things that benefit their spirit or the, the things that benefit their soul or their knowledge in Christ. So we've got less people who are there in the church for fellowship, for there in the church to, to, to hear the word of God and learn new things in the word of God. It's only very few. So it's, so most of the time, the people that we see today in the church are people who are there to benefit. They need to benefit. So without benefits, there's no church. So if I don't want to pick through, there's no church. Uh, if I don't want money, there's no church. If if I'm rich, there's no church. So this is what's happening uh, in today's lives, you know. So people, they don't have time to study the word of God. You still remember in the book of Acts and Paul, like you will preach until the scholars and the scribes, they go and search in the scriptures, so it's it, it's rare in these days to find uh, kind uh, those kind of people who can go to the scriptures and 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 check things like scriptural. So uh, we have to start with the basic. And today I'm going to 
uh, I'm going to start with the, the times of God. For example, uh, in my previous video, I was talking about the month of Abib. And I said that the Abib is the first month of God. And we proved that scripturally in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 12. So, and then we proved that scripturally uh, that a... Uh, Abib, it is um, the first month of God. And then you'll find out that the Abib that we're talking about, the first month of God, it is um, in our today's time or in our today's calendar, it is March. You get my point? It is March. So even the calendar that we are using, the calendar that we are using, we copied it from somewhere. And we have copied it from the Romans. So the calendar that we are using today, it is from the Romans which it we call it the Gregorian calendar. And this calendar, it was established in 1582 or 1578 or 1572, somewhere there. I'm not really, um, I'm, I'm not really sure, but it's all, it's, it's between there, it's between there. Uh, and then when you check very carefully, uh, 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 the calendar that, that we have in the, in, in, in the Bible and the calendar that we are using, the Gregorian calendar, it's not the same calendar. So, there's a God's calendar and 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 I don't want to dwell much on that one because because there's videos that I, I do talking about the months, what God is saying during those months, stuff like that. But I'm just laying the foundation so that we may understand. So and then the day, the first day of Abib, it is not like really, uh, it's not the first of March. Actually, it's around 20 or 21 March because it has to be. Uh, it has to be a day that has to start at the equinox or at the full moon. You know, when I talk about um, not full moon, I mean like the new moon, you see, because when we talk about the new moon, we're talking about when the moon is in conjunction with the sun. You get my point? So the day, the first day, according to God, of the first day of the first month, according to God, it has to be on the full moon. And that's it's 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 in Abib, right? So which it is uh, on March. So from there. When we read through the scriptures, you'll get to understand that in the day which Jesus Christ he was crucified, he was crucified in in the day called um, in in the Passover, and the Passover day it has to be on the fourteenth of Abib. You get my point. So, and then if therefore the first day of Abib it has to be on the twenty of March, and then you have to add fourteen days from the twenty of March. That will take us to somewhere around like five or six April, somewhere there. It depends whether it's on the twenty one or twenty one March or twenty March, and then you add the fourteen days, and then that's where we get the day Passover and stuff like that. You get it. So that's why. Even like the other video of the of the months or, or, or what the Lord is saying in, in the month of April, I'm going to drop it next week, uh, probably next week, I'm, I'm going to drop it wherever I'll be talking about the months. So, but anyway, I'm not, I'm, I'm not there. So, I just want us to understand these are just the basics. Number two, I want us to talk about the, the days according to God. You get my point? The days according to God. Now, many people, as I have said, that they they think they think that Jesus Christ he was crucified on Friday, right? And then he resurrected on Sunday. And from we know that Sunday it is the first day of the week. I hope we all know that. And I hope that we know that Saturday it is the seventh day, which is the last day of the week. I hope we know that. I hope we know that. And then Sunday, it is the first week. And remember what God said. He said uh, that in uh, in the book of Exodus, that on the seventh day, people, they do what they have to rest. They have to go to rest. You get it? So now, and then um, from the scriptures where we are reading, from the scriptures where we are reading, you'll understand that on the on, on Passover, Jesus Christ, he was crucified on the Passover. We're going to prove, we're going to prove that scriptural. So if Jesus, he was crucified on Friday, for example, if he was crucified on 2 p.m. on Friday, and then the next day, which it's Saturday at 2 p.m., it marks one day, right? And then Jesus, he resurrected on Sunday, which it was the first day of the week. So that it does not even make two days it doesn't even make two days and two nights it's one day and a half i don't i don't know i don't know if you get it but like anyway a day unto god 
a day it does not begin in um in the 12th a.m a day according to god it begins at 6 p.m even with the jewish culture so a day does not begin in 12 a.m it begins at 6 p.m and i want us to prove it that scripturally why am I saying that a day it begins at 6 p.m.? Now, when you read from the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1, the Bible says, that In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form. That verse number 2. And the earth was without form, void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering or moving upon the surface of the waters. Verse number three, and God said, let there be light, and there was the light. Verse number four, and the Bible says that God, he separated the light from the darkness. Verse number five, and the Bible says that, and God called the light a day. I want you to mark this. And God called a light a day. Ne? And then he called the night, he called, he called the darkness the night. You get it? And then and the Bible says that there was evening and there was morning. So what we see from verse number five, there was evening and then there was morning. So 12 p.m. it's not the evening, that's night. Do you get it? So there was evening and there was morning. Even now, when you read from when when you go from verse number six, where God He divided the waters from above and the waters from below, and after God dividing that, and the Bible says that there was evening and there was morning, and that was the second day. When you go deeper, the Bible says that the God He gathered the waters that were below, and then He called the gathering of waters the sea, and he, he said the dry and He called the dry land the earth, and He commanded the earth to produce plants. And the Bible says there was evening and there was morning, and that was the third day. You go deeper, you read reading from verse number 14. It says that God created the two great lights, the one that will rule during the day and the one that will rule during the night. And God created the sun and the moon and the stars to do what? For lights and then and for the appointment and the season. And the Bible says that, and God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning. You get my point? When, when you go deeper and the Bible says that, there and God created the what? He created the creatures of the sea. He created the fishes in the sea. And the Bible says, a God saw that it was good. And a God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning. And that was the fifth day. And the Bible says that, and God created a man and he created the what? The cattle and, and created the beast. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning and that was the sixth day. So when you read from the book of Genesis, you'll understand that it starts with the evening and then it comes the morning. I hope you get that. So you get my point. So a day it starts from the evening and the evening it is the 6 p.m. And then from the 6 p.m. until to the 6 p.m. the following day. So unto God that is a day. You get it? So, and Jesus, when you read from the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse number 17, it says that Jonah, he was swallowed by what? By a whale or by a fish. He was in the belly of the fish for how many days? For three days and three nights. You get it? For three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. When you read from the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse number 40, the Bible says, Jesus says, The Son of Man shall be what in the heart of the earth, just like Jonah, who was inside the belly of the fish. So the Son of Man will be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. You get it? Three days and three nights. So it, it has to be the fully three days and it also has to be fully three nights you get it so which means a day a night it's from 6 p.m to 6 a.m that's one night 
and then from from 6 from 6 a.m. and then until 6 p.m. that's a day so so and then it completes a day you get my point so this this how many hours there is 12 hours of the night and the 12 hours of the day you get it i hope i hope now you understand okay then i want us to open the scripture in the in this book of second Corinthians, so that we may, you may also understand how a day began you get my point because for the sake of other people who don't uh believe in what i'm saying let's go to the book of second Corinthians, chapter 11 verse number 25 now, this is Paul speaking. The Bible says, Thy thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, thrice I suffered a shipwreck, a night and a day, a night and a day, a night and a day. You get it? A night and a day. And then let's go back to, I want us to go to the book of Mark chapter 1, verse number 32. The book of Mark chapter 1 verse number 22. So a day does not begin at 12 a.m. according to God. It begins at 6 p.m. If you don't know how to interpret these things, we will always the time fail how to, in, we will always the time uh, 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 fail to get what the Bible is saying about the hours in the Bible. So I want us to go to the book of Mark, the book of Mark, gospel according to St. Mark. The book of Mark chapter, we're gonna read, we will be reading a lot of the book of Mark today. Let's see the book of Mark chapter 1 verse number 32. What does the Bible say? And at eve, at even, at even, when the sun did set, what time does a sun set? It said at 6 p.m. And then they brought unto him all that were deceased and them that were possessed with devils. We get that point. So the so so at even, you see, that's six p.m. when it did set. That's six p.m. So remember in the book of Jesus, it says at evening. Now, to conclude on this one, on the issue of the of the hours, on the issue of understanding uh, 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 the hours, we we have something that we call the eight watches. From the 6 p.m. to the 9 p.m., it is the first watch. From the 9 p.m. to the 12 p.m., it is the second watch. From the 12 p.m. to the 3 p.m., it is the third watch. Then from the 3 p.m. to the 6 p.m., 6, 6 a.m., it is um, the fourth watch. You get it in the morning. So therefore, from 6 a.m. in the morning until 9 a.m., it is the first watch. Day watch. So I've got the night watch and the day watch. You get it. So therefore, from six a.m. until nine a.m. it in, in nine a.m. it is it is it is um it is the first it is it, it, it is the first watch. It's a day watch. It's the first watch. And then from nine until twelve nine a.m. until twelve p.m. it is the second day watch. And then from twelve p.m. until three p.m. it is the third day watch. Then from three p.m. until six p.m. it is the fourth day watch. So all in all, it is eight watches. So therefore, we've got four night watches and four day watches. For sure, you understand about that. You get it. So, and then from from the six from the six p.m. until uh, uh, nine p.m., it is time for meditation. It's time for prayers and all the stuff. That's why here it says that at even they brought all those who were diseased. It is time to it is time to engage with the spiritual things. That's why I like the services which starts between six until nine because that's where a day begin. So we begin with the word of God. So service that's usually starts between six and nine. They're very much powerful. I'm not saying that the others are not powerful. For, but these ones, like they, they are more, 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 more important. So, but anyway, I don't want to talk about the watches and all the stuff. But we're just passing by. You get it? So we may understand really, really when it is the day which Jesus Christ he was crucified. Now, get this. Then now we know that um, Saturday is Sabbath, right? If if we don't have to argue with that one, Saturday is Sabbath. Therefore, Sunday is the day which it is the first day. So, if then you don't know that Saturday it is the seventh day, 
Go to the book of um, Exodus and read the book of Exodus. We don't have to argue about it. But I want us to look into something, into the scriptures. So we have to understand about the, the Sabbath also. And the what we call uh, 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 the, the seven feast. The seven feast, right? So why am I talking about all these, the days, the feast and the Sabbath. I'm laying the foundation, guys. When we go into, when we are tackling the issue, the hours which Jesus Christ he was crucified, you will understand very well these things. Because if we don't start with these things, you won't understand. You won't understand at all. So now, there are seven feasts. You still remember what God said in the book of Leviticus. Yo, I don't know why I'm saying I'm still remember. Okay. There, there are seven feasts that God gave unto the children of Israel in the book of Leviticus chapter 23. And the first feast, it was um, the feast of Passover, right? The second feast, it was the feast of the uneven bread. So, the feast of Passover, remember even when the children of Israel, when, when they, the day they went up from, from Egypt, it was during Passover feast whereby they have to kill a lamb after killing a lamb and then they had to put the blood on onto that doorpost you get my point it was like at the top and even on the other side it's sort of like a sort of like a like the cross you get it so and and it was the blood of the lamb you get it and jesus is the lamb of god and they have to put it on the doorpost and a door it's made out of wood a wood is from a tree. And, and the Bible says that curses the man who is hanged on the tree. That's referring to Jesus. So now, when the feast of Passover and the feast of the unleavened bread, these two feasts, they are likely, they are, they are connected to each other. You get it? Like they are too much connected to each other. And the feast that we are really talking about, when you read the book of, uh, let's go to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13. Bear with me, guys. We are still going there. You, you need to be a Bible reader, guys. If you are following these kind of teachings, don't be bored. And you, want to, uh, you want to know a day with Jesus Christ. He was crucified, but you don't want to follow up these things. So, you need to understand from the beginning what are we really talking about so I'm into the book of Colossians chapter chapter 2 starting from verse number 16 listen to what the Bible says from the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse number 16 the Bible says let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holiday or the new moon you see the new moon which is the first day you still remember the first day? It's a it's a feast, okay? And then, or of the Sabbath days, okay? Sabbath days. We'll talk about the Sabbath, not so long. Which are the shade of the things to come, but the body is of Christ. Which is was the shade of the things to come. So the, that event or that feast of the Passover, it was the shade of the crucifixion of Jesus because they had to keep a lamb and they have to they had to put the blood onto the door post. And Jesus his blood was shed on the cross. You get it? And therefore when we talk about the unleavened bread is the bread that is without it's, it's without yeast. So it is the bread. It's We're talking about a bread that cannot be rotten. You get it? So the body of Jesus did not rot. The body of Jesus did not rot. You get my point? So that's why Jesus, he is that unleavened bread. That's why Jesus he said, I am the bread of life. John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. So mean that he is that unleavened bread, Jesus. And they are connected because in a day with Jesus Christ, he was, he was buried. It was the feast of unleavened bread. We'll prove to that scriptural. It was it, it was the day of the unleavened bread. You get it? I, ho I hope you're following. So, and then from there, they had to eat uh, uh, the bread for seven days. I mean, they have to eat uh, the unleavened bread from, from, uh, from the 15th until the... 21, which they have to eat it from seven days. Let's go back to the book of Exodus, guys. Why am I reading all these kind of things? Talking about the feast and all the stuff. It's because... It's because I'm laying the foundation. I'm laying the foundation. I want us to go to the book of... 
No. I want us to go to the book of Exodus chapter 12. Chapter 12. I want us to read verse number 16. The book of Exodus chapter 12 verse number 16. And in the first day there shall be a holy conviction. In the first day. Remember, the first day it's Sunday, right? Which you said it's 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 Sunday, and there it's a, it's a whole conviction. In the seventh day, there shall be there shall be a holy conviction to you. No manner of work shall be done in them. So they don't have to work. We know about that during the Sabbath that people don't have to work during the day of Sabbath, right? Okay. And then I want us also to go to the book of uh, Leviticus. I want us to go to the book of Leviticus chapter 23. Here we are, the book of Leviticus chapter 23. We'll, we'll have to come back here also. And then I want us to read verse number 24. Where are you, verse number 24? Okay, now the Bible says, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying in the seventh month, you get it, on seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath and a memorial blowing of the trumpets. On a, so the Sabbath day, it's not only the last day. The Sabbath day, it can be any day of the feast. You get it? Any day of the feast, from the seventh feast, from the feast of Passover, the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of uh, of of the first fruits, the feast of the of the Pentecost, the feast of trumpets, the feast of atonement, the feast of tabernacles. So all these seven feasts, any day of a feast, it's Sabbath. It's called Sabbath. So listen to here. It says on the seventh month, the first day of the seventh month, whether it's Monday, whether it's Tuesday, it has to be a Sabbath. Meaning they don't have to work, they don't have to do anything. You get it? So we understand from that. So we understand from that that the Sabbath day, it's not necessary to be on the seventh day. I want you to get it. The Sabbath day is not necessary to be on the seventh day, but it has to be it has it, it has it, it, it is associated also with the day of the Sabbath. I mean the day of the feast. You get it? The day of the feast. I hope someone it's it's uh it's getting it's getting it's getting these things. So now I want us to also to go to the book of uh going to the book of Ezekiel. I want us the, to read the book of Ezekiel, chapter 45, actually. Starting from verse number 21. Now, the Bible says, In the first month, in the 14th day of the month, in the first month, that is Abib, guys. The first month, it's Abib. In the 14th day. So, we know that Jesus Christ, he was crucified on the 14th day. I, the 14th day, because Jesus, he was crucified in the day of Passover. In the feast of Passover. So Jesus Christ was crucified on the 14th day of the first month. Meaning that Jesus was crucified in Abib or in Nisan. And now let's continue. On the 14th day of the first month, you shall have the Passover. A feast of seven days. Unleavened bread shall it be eaten. You shall have the, what, the Passover. A feast of seven days. Why why, why uh, Ezekiel here is telling us about the, the they shall have the Passover a feast of seven days. It's because I said the Passover and the unleavened bread they are connected together, and from that period where they have to eat the unleavened bread for seven days, it was called the feast of Passover. So also they they also used to call it the one the feast of Passover. Whew. I hope somebody is enjoying it. We're going there. We're going to finish not so long. We're going to finish not so long. Bear with me, guys. This is just the 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 introduction. We are just establishing the foundation so that guys you may understand where are we really going. Where are we really going? Let's go back to the book of um the book of Leviticus chapter 23. The book of Leviticus chapter 23. Let's go there. I think we're here. Yeah, the pen here. Leviticus chapter 23. I want us to read verse number 5. Verse number 5. You see again. It says, In the 14th day of the first month, at even, look, in the 
fourteenth day of the first month at even at even meaning that this day the first day of the month it's gonna begin at even which is gonna be the evening of the thirteenth day of the month because six o'clock of the thirteenth day of that month of Abib now we have entered into the fourteenth day which is Abib. I don't know if you get that point. And then it says that um, it shall be the first month. Okay. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Is the Passover. Number one. Get that. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. So you see that when we're talking about the Unleavened Bread and the Unleavened Bread and the Passover, that they are two connected. So when on the 14th it's Passover, the following day it's unleavened bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope somebody is blessed. I hope somebody is blessed. So I hope somebody is blessed. So that's how it is. So then when was Jesus Christ really, 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 really crucified? Now, if Jesus Christ himself he was crucified if jesus christ was crucified on friday i have proven to you that it cannot be on friday because it cannot be three days and three nights if he was crucified on friday for example if he was crucified on friday at 2 p.m the following day on saturday is the, the following day 2 p.m of saturday it marks one day then the following day which it's sunday 2 p.m it marks second day you see it's not longer it's not longer three days and three nights it can't be dead so there therefore it means we have to count from sunday which is the first day counting it backwards but let's go to the book of uh let's go to the book of mark let's go to the book of mark Let's go to the book of Mark. Where are you, Mark? Mark, Mark, Mark. Saint Mark. I want us to read this scripture. Uh, Mark chapter 16. Let's go to the book of Mark chapter 16. Starting from verse number 1. Okay. Jesus' resurrection. The Bible says, And when the Sabbath was passed, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and, and Solomon and Solomon, bought sweet spices and they might go to come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, very early in the morning, mark that one, early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher at, at the rising of the sun. So this rising of the sun, we know the sun, it rises at 6 a.m. The morning it's at 6 a.m. So now I want you to mark that. So Jesus he rose on the first day of the week. Okay, let us go to um verse number nine. I want us to read verse number nine. And now when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week. Early the first day of the week. He risen early the first day of the week. Not early in the morning. No, Jesus didn't rise early in the morning. He rose early of the first day of the morning. Meaning that if Jesus he rose early, it meaning that he rose on Saturday, early of that day, which is around 6 o'clock. He rose around 6 p.m. The previous day, which was Saturday, because a day it, it a day it begins at six p.m. A day begins at six p.m. So if therefore he rose, if therefore he rose at the early hours of the the early hours of of the of of the first day, because the first day it's gonna start at six p.m. at Saturday. That is the first day. I don't know if you get my point. So this was, they came early in the morning, meaning they came on Sunday, but it's still the first day because that first day is going to end at what time? At 6 p.m. on Sunday. 
Oh, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if you get it. And when you count backwards, when we count backwards using the six p.m. Jesus, when he was crucified, he was crucified on the Passover. We must bear that in mind, right? He was crucified on Passover, right? After Passover, Jesus Christ, when they when they when they buried him. It was the following day of the uneven bread, meaning it was on the 14th day, but it was around 6 p.m. Therefore, we have entered into the feast of the uneven bread. That's why the book of John, it says that. Whew. That's what the book of John says. So, then Jesus, he was not crucified on Friday. As many people claim that Jesus Christ, he was crucified on, 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 on Friday. Jesus Christ, he was crucified on the 14th of, of Abib. On the 14th of Abib, right? And then when he was crucified on the 14th of Abib, he was crucified around 6 o'clock, whereby we were entering into the Sabbath day of the unleavened bread. Remember, he himself is the bread, right? Is the bread of life. And and after six o'clock, it was the feast of the, the what? Of the unleavened bread. Okay, let's go to the book of John chapter 19, verse number three. The book of John chapter 19, verse number three. The book of John chapter 19, verse number three. Uh, the book of John, chapter 19, verse number 3. Uh, the book of John, chapter, oh, no, verse 31, I mean, not number 3. Verse 31. Now, the Bible says, the Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. You still remember I said that it, he was crucified during the Passover, right? Yes, it was Passover. And then, uh, let's continue reading. For that Sabbath day was a high day. So, the Bible introduced us something about a high day. Beside Pilate and, they are, and their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. Now, there's something that we call a high day. When you talk about a high day, we are talking about the first day of the uneven bread and the last day of the uneven bread. So remember, they have to eat the uneven bread for seven days, according to the scriptures. So the high day, it is the first day. It remember, it was the preparation, come on, of the uneven bread. So it was the high day. So the high day is the first day of the uneven bread and the last day of the of, of the of what of the uneven bread. Meaning that it is it is on the 15th and then the 21st. That is the high day. That's what we call the high day. Hope you understand from that point. Right? I hope that you, you, you understand from that point. So they were preparing for that. So when Jesus Christ he was crucified. When Jesus Christ, he was crucified on, 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 on the 14th. And then from the 14th, right? From that 6 p.m. until the following day, which is on the 15th, at 6 o'clock, it marks one night. I want you to get this. From 6, p, from 6 p.m. on the 14th until, until 6 a.m. the following day, it marks one night. And therefore, from 6 a.m. on the 15th, and then it until 6 p.m. on the 15th, then it marks one day and one night. We get it? And therefore, from 6 p.m. on the 15th until 6 a.m. the following day, which is, which is on the 16th, it marks one night, right? And then... On the 16th, uh, from 6 a.m. until uh, uh, 6 p.m. on the 16th, it marks a day. So therefore, you see, we are still having what? 
one day and one night. On the 16th, we have one day and one night also. So therefore, again, from here, from, from 16, right? From on the 16th, eh? from 6 p.m. until 6 a.m. the following day, which is on the 17th, it, it, it marks what? The third night. It marks the third night. Meaning that we are having two, two days and what? Uh, we're having two days and three nights. Therefore, on the 17th from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m., it marks a day. So whereby it means, so now Jesus, he has spent how many days? He has spent how many days? One day and one night. One day and one night. One day and one night. That's three days and three nights. So the social community of Kamugu in a Friday, it doesn't make sense because it can't be three days and three nights. It can be. It can be. So meaning that Jesus, he rose on the 17th. And when Jesus rose on the 17th, around 6 p.m., that's why the Bible says that he, he, he resurrected the early of the first day. When does the day begin? If day does not begin, 12 o'clock, it begins at 6 o'clock. Meaning that Jesus, he rose around 6 p.m. And therefore, the next morning, he, he manifested unto Mary Magdalene. Come on. So already, like the tomb was open. The following day. So, so you get it. So, which means that Jesus, he was crucified on Wednesday night. It means Jesus, he was crucified on Wednesday night. Now, let's calculate it very well. If Jesus, he was, if Jesus was crucified on Wednesday night, 6 p.m., Therefore, Wednesday night, therefore, Thursday, uh, uh, Thursday, Logorshala Thursday, Thursday, 6 p.m., it marks one night, right? And therefore, from, from Thursday, 6, from Thursday, 6 a.m. until uh, uh, 6 p.m., it marks one day, it marks one night and one day. So, therefore, from uh, Thursday, 6 p.m. until Friday, until Friday, uh, 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 6 a.m., it marks another night. Therefore, from Friday, 6 a.m. until Friday, 6 a.m., until Friday, 6 p.m., it marks the word, it, it marks another day, which means it's two days and two nights. So, and then now, from 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 Friday, uh, from Friday, six p.m. until Saturday, six a.m. It marks another night. From Saturday, six a.m. <laughs> until Saturday, six p.m. It makes another day, which it means three days and three nights. Meaning Jesus he rose. On Saturday around 6 a.m., around 6 p.m., which is the first day. And therefore, the full therefore, according to our time, therefore, when it's when it's six around six at the rising of the sun, which is around six o'clock when they came, it was still on the third day, guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I hope someone I hope someone is it's 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 getting these things. So now let's take it on another angle because I don't have to proceed the the hour okay on 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 the on day 13 on on the 13 ne? on the 13 day of the first month around 6 p.m jesus he ate the supper why i'm saying on the 13 around 6 p.m so because on the 13 of the first month around 6 p.m that will mark the what the the first day because it it, it, it will mark the it will it, it it will be Passover. Remember, a day it starts at at what time? A, a, a day it starts at six o'clock. So from six or from six p.m. Jesus on the thirteen 
he ate the supper, right? He ate the supper. And then from, from eating the supper around there, from 9 p.m., that was the first watch, from the second watch, which is from 9 p.m. until 12, that's where we see Jesus. He went to get a man and pray. Whereby he was praying, he let this car pass, and there was an angel that came there and, 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 and strengthened him. You still remember that story? And then the Bible says that his sword became blood, and therefore it touched the ground. You still remember? And I also once said this in, <clears throat> in, 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 in the previous sermon, in the previous sermon, that when he was praying in the garden, he was canceling what happened in the garden because it was the garden of Gethsemane and he was canceling what the first Adam did in the garden of Eden. So because he sweat the blood and then as he sweat the blood, remember what God said in, 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 in the book of Genesis, he said, you shall eat from what? From your sweat, right? You shall eat from your sweat. You have to wait now. And then you, you're going to use a garden tools. You have to sweat. And therefore, the sweat of Jesus became blood and the Bible says it touched the ground, the same ground it was cursed in the book of Genesis. So therefore, when that sweat touched the ground, it healed the ground. So, and when it healed the ground, and therefore the Bible says that the ground shall bring what shall bring forth the thorns. So therefore, the, 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 the sweat that became the blood, it was canceling the sweat in the book of Genesis. And therefore, the thorns that it had to come out from the ground, it was, it was canceled by the crown of thorns that Jesus had on his head. You get it? So, it, so it's just like that. So even like the curse which was upon the ground it was cancelled by the blood that went into the ground. We, we get it. So he went there from Gethsemane and stuff like that. And therefore from 12 p.m. that's where Jesus Christ he from 12 p.m. from 12 a.m. at midnight it's where Jesus Christ he was arrested. That's when Judas Iscariot he came he came there with the soldiers and Adon so he kissed Jesus and then so that's where Jesus Christ he was arrested and those people didn't even have power to arrest Jesus, but Jesus he gave himself to them. You get my point? Because Jesus, Jesus he was so powerful, was so powerful, was so powerful. They didn't even know who was Jesus because those people, like they will look alike because of the fellowship that they had. They looked alike. You get my point? They didn't even know who was Jesus until Peter came and kissed Jesus. You get it? That was around 12 p.m. Then from 12 p.m. until around 3 a.m. And then that is the third watch. Uh, Jesus, we see Jesus, uh, 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 he appeared uh, uh, before Cephas. You still remember? He appeared before Cephas and then uh, the high priest. You still remember about that? And then from the fourth watch, which was from uh, uh, 3, 3 a.m. until 6 p.m., we see Jesus, uh, 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 he appeared before Pilate. You get my point. He was he appeared before Pilate, and then from six p.m. from six a.m. until uh, nine a.m. That's where Jesus was crucified. Jesus, he was crucified at nine a.m. Nimisho. Let me prove it to you scripturally. So this is where we're going to apply all those hours, everything that I was telling you about. So now we're going to apply it, that Jesus, he was crucified at 9 a.m. Let's prove it to you scripturally. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 19, starting from verse number 14. Let's read verse number 14. So, okay. When he appeared to Pilate, I said it was, what time? It was... It was 6 a.m. When he, when he appeared before Pilate. Now listen to what the Bible says. And it was the preparation of the, it was the, preparation of the Passover. You see? The preparation of the, what? of the Passover. Remember it began where? It began on the 13th, on the other day, which it was night. At around 6, we ate the Passover. But here it was the preparation because they were, prepare, they were preparing for a daytime. And then now, let's get this. And about the sixth hour, so they, when they say the sixth hour, this sixth hour is from the midnight until the time, until that, uh, uh, until 6 a.m. I don't know, do you get, do you get it? Okay, let me, pro let me prove to you again that it was 6 a.m. in the morning. Let us go to, uh, let us go to the book of Matthew chapter 27, verse number 22, the book of Matthew. Scripture interprets another scripture so it's scripture to scripture so we don't talk about something that comes up from our my head or something like that now the bible says when the morning was come listen the morning when does the morning begin six 
When the morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus and put him to death. And when they had bound him, you see, it, it when the morning, when does the morning come? Six. You get it? So when John says the sixth hour, we know that he's, it's from 12 a.m. until six in the morning. So it was a bit accurate with our time that we are using. You get it? But I'm saying that Jesus, he was crucified on the, on the he was crucified at 9, at 9 p.m. We're also going to prove that to you. Yeah, let's go to the book of Mark chapter 15, verse 25. The book of Mark chapter 15, verse 25. I hope you are enjoying. If you are enjoying, you can comment, guys. You are enjoying. You are enjoying this kind of teachings and all the stuff, you know. You know, I know people that don't like these kind of teachings, you know. They don't like reading of the Bible. Okay, Mark chapter 15, verse 25. Let's read. Where's my pen? Verse 25. Listen, and the Bible says, and it was the third hour that they crucified him. Third hour that they crucified him. The third hour. You get it? The third hour. So, third hour from what? It is the third hour from the morning. Remember at the morning, that's where they were beating him. So, from the third hour, therefore, it's from it's from what? Six, ne? Seven. Eight, nine. So at the third, at, 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 at the third hour, it's nine o'clock. Not the third watch. No, hour. Get that? Remember, I spoke about the watches. Don't confuse the watches with the hours. No, third hour. You get it? So Jesus was crucified at the third hour. On the third hour, you get it? Which it was nine a.m. Do we get it? Do we enjoy? Do we enjoy? So that's how it is. And then as like he, at, and then as at the third hour when Jesus Christ was crucified, and then at around 12 p.m., that's where the darkness, that's where Wanamnyama, that's where there was the darkness on the earth from 12 p.m. until 3 p.m. Hallelujah. Until 3 p.m. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 23. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 23 about what I'm telling you. From 12 p.m. until 3, 3 a.m. Until 3, 3 p.m. There was the darkness. Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23 verse 44. I hope somebody is enjoying this. I hope somebody is enjoying this. Luke chapter 23. Oh... Luke chapter 23, verse 44. What's wrong with my Bible? Luke chapter 23, verse 44. Let's read 44. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. I want, I want you to grab that one. There was this, okay, it was about the sixth hour, the sixth hour, there was the darkness Sixth hour, then you count from that morning on the sixth hour, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. About the sixth hour, come on, about the sixth hour, there was the darkness that is 12 o'clock p.m. until what the ninth hour. What is the ninth hour? Remember, we're on the sixth, ne? and we said on the sixth is 12, one, two, three, about on until the ninth hour, until. 12 until 3 p.m. So that darkness, it was there for three hours. And on the 3 p.m., that's where Jesus Christ died. So Jesus Christ, he died at 3 p.m. At that time. Let us prove, let us prove it. Luke chapter 23 again, verse 53 to 54. 53 to 54. Okay. And, okay, and he took it down and wrapped it in the linen and laid it in the sepulchre that was in, in a hind in stone, where never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation of the Sabbath that drew on. Okay, okay, when Jesus died at, at 3 p.m., 
Jesus, he was buried at 6 p.m. At 6 p.m., which it was preparing for the bread by they were preparing for the unleavened bread. So when they were preparing for the unleavened bread, Jesus, remember his body shall not remain all night on the cross. So they meaning that they buried Jesus, they, they buried Jesus around 6 p.m. And when they buried and when they and when they buried him around 6 p.m., as like I've explained from there until he rose on Saturday 6 p.m. He was crucified on the 14th, which was the Passover. Which was the Passover. Let us go to the book of Mark, uh, chapter 16. Uh, the book of Mark chapter 16, but I think like we we have read it. We have read we have read the book of Mark chapter 16. So this it's uh, 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 what happens. This is actually what really unfolded uh, during the the death of Jesus and all this stuff. So Jesus Christ he was crucified on Wednesday, which it was at 6 p.m. and he rose on Saturday, which it was on 6 p.m. again. And then the following day on Sunday, that's where they saw him. You see, this is how it went, guys. This is exactly what happened. And actually, you still remember, you know that a man, he is three in one. He is the spirit, he is the soul, and he is the spirit, he possesses the soul, and he lives in the body. So when Jesus Christ, he was at the cross, hanging at the cross, and therefore, we know that there's a difference between Jesus and the Christ. Many people don't know about that. When Jesus Christ, he was at the cross, there's a difference between Jesus and the Christ. Jesus, he is the way that became flesh. Christ, he is the spirit that came into Jesus. In the book of Matthew chapter 3, and the spirit and the, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. That it was the Christ coming unto Jesus. From that time he was called Christ Jesus, he was, was called Jesus Christ. Meaning that Jesus, which is the flesh, has what? Has possessed the, the, the spirit, which is Christ. But after Jesus Christ uh, uh, died, or after resurrection, he was not longer Jesus Christ, but he was Christ Jesus. Meaning that, meaning that the glorified body, which is the Christ, has swallowed the body Jesus. So that's why he can enter through the world now it's not longer limited you get it so when he was at the cross jesus uh, uh he was at the cross christ left jesus and jesus began to cry and say eli 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 lama sabbatan the lord lord why have you forsaken me why because christ left jesus at the cross and when christ left jesus at the cross jesus died and when jesus died his body it was in the grave, but his soul, it went to hell. And when his soul went to hell, look unto this. His spirit, it went to God. His body is in the grave. His soul, it went to hell. So when you read the book of Peter, it talks about Jesus. He went to preach unto the spirits which are under the the earth because by that time paradise, it was not up there, but paradise, it was underground. So but that's a topic for another day. So Jesus, he went to preach unto the spirits that were that that were in, in prison in hell. And many people they think that when Christ he went there to hell, he was he was there to preaching to those people who died in those days. No, this when the Bible talks about the spirits which were bound in prison, it is talking about the spirits of God or the sons of God that came during the time of Noah. They are called the spirits. So we so the, in hell, hell is for souls. It's not for the spirits. So hell is for souls, but it's for the spirit because hell has got departments because on the other departments there was the paradise and there was a girl that was dividing the paradise and hell so that girl according to the book of Luke chapter 16 that there was a girl that dividing us that girl it is the bottomless pit we'll talk about the bottomless pit another day and then there was a place called the hell and on the other side of hell there's a place called the prison which we call the tassas the the, the tar is Tartarus, yeah, Tartarus. And this is where Peter is saying that the spirits were bound there. Jesus, he went down there and he preached to them. According to the book of, 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 of Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible says that the one who ascended up, he first descended up to the lower parts of the earth and he ascended above all the heavens. So if you believe in three heavens, he ascended above all those heavens. If you believe in the fourth heaven, seventh heaven, whatever heavens, Jesus, he passed all the heavens and he went into the place of eternity. 
So now, when he went there, he prayed. So his soul, when Jesus uh, uh, arose from the dead, he didn't rise alone, but he rose with the saints, with the people who were in the bosom of Abraham. Because in the olden days, the people who were in the olden days, people, the saints, uh, people who were dying, or the saints, they went to the bosom of Abraham, which it is paradise. You get it? Which it was not up there, but it was it, it was underground. So when Jesus Christ rose up again. He rose again. He appeared with the saints into Jerusalem.